I know you're an amazing coach, but what if you could get even better results for your clients? The reality is that a lot of us are great at what we do, but there's always those clients that slip through the cracks, some don't quite stick with the plan, and you only wish that 100% of your clients could get amazing results, right? Listen, I'm in that boat as well. The reality is that not all of our clients win. And what I wanna share with you in this video is some recent thinking I've been doing about why this happens and a simple framework we can use to help alleviate that. Cool? So in case you don't know me, my name is Uriel Kim. I'm the CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. We help health professionals and coaches scale their businesses online without the grind. And that means less one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to really impact people's lives, but you know that scaling a one-on-one -on -one coaching business is just not doable, then this is going to help you out. So I'm going to allude to the iPad as I often do on these videos. And I want to give you a framework that again, if you want to jot this down and kind of take some notes as I'm going through this, I think will really help you think through how to build out your coaching program, how you deliver to clients, and maybe in a way that's a little bit different than what you may have been used to. So let's dive into this. So right here on the iPad, you can see a triangle. I want you to consider this like an iceberg. So if I draw a line across the top there and we color in the bottom underneath here as water, okay, so that'll be our reference point. So everything under the white line, under the black line here is essentially underneath the surface of the water, right? So as the analogy often goes, you know, the tip of the iceberg is just the tip of the iceberg. That's essentially what we're getting to here. And what I want to suggest to you is that there's actually three important levels that we want to make sure that we address for our clients. Now, the reality is that people come in and let's just say you're helping them with their health. They're coming in for really, you know, for the lack of a better term, one result, one, one outcome, which is I want to lose weight. I want to get in better shape. I want to get pregnant, whatever the situation is. So they're coming to you for a result. And I'll just put happy face right there. Okay. So that's why they're coming in. They're coming in because they want a result that you say you can help deliver on. Now, part of that is obviously gonna be the strategy and part of it is the tactics. Strategy is really deciding what to do, like should I do this based on the options I have and tactics is actually the execution of it. So a strategy could be, well, we're gonna do interval training. That's one strategy. If we wanted to do cardio, another person might have a different strategy, which is we're gonna do long duration cardio, right? As an example. So here's the distinction is that, so here's what, I'm writing this down. Okay, so here's what your clients want, okay? Here's what your clients want. They want the top of the iceberg. They want the results. They want the outcomes. They want the strategy, the tactics, the plan, execute, cool. But why is it that, and this is the big thing, why is it that with all the diet books out there, with all the trainers, all the nutritionists, all the amazing health practitioners on the planet, two thirds of the North American population is still overweight. We've made zero headway on cancer, heart disease, all the big lifestyle diseases. We've made little to no headway on these as a, as a society. Why is that? We have all the tactical inputs, yet the outputs are no better than they were a decade ago. And it's my belief that what I'm sharing with you here is part of the reason for that. And unless we address this, we're never really gonna address the real issue. So the top up here, we say, okay, here's what your clients want. Underneath the surface, here's the big thing. Here's what they don't even realize they need. Here's what they don't even realize they need. And I share this with you because what I'm about to share with you are three pillars I believe are absolutely fundamental to helping you become a better version of yourself and your clients as well. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because the last couple of weeks I've been doing a lot of really in the trenches, deep diving into how we as a company can help our clients and more of them win. Because the reality is that we've helped thousands of health professionals and coaches and we're very, very good at what we do, but we're not good enough. If I'm being very honest, right? We're amazing. We're like, trust me, we're really good. But in my mind, we can still be better. And when I when I say we can still be better, what I mean by that is how can we solve for the lowest common denominator? How can we ensure that no matter where someone is in their journey, we can help them no matter what? And that might be a bit of a pipe dream, but it's also a really good challenge because it's easy for you know, to help in our case, business owners in the health space who have assets and experience, and we can just plug a couple things in and they take off. Great. What if someone's on the other side of the spectrum there in terms of not having the assets, in terms of an email list, social following, maybe they don't have the marketing and sales skills that some others do. So how do we build something that can help them as well? And I, we still do have a great solution, but I want to make it better. And here's the reality is that I've come to, and I've mentioned this before, if you followed my videos, there might be nuances that are parallels. First things first is that 
your business will only grow to the extent that you do. Okay, so that's in the context of business. But let's choose the context of you helping your clients. So someone's health outcome, let's consider that the outcome. Their outcomes are the trailing indicators of their personal growth. So essentially what I mean by that is the weight loss, the improved dietary habits, all those things are the outcomes that come after the personal growth side of things, okay? This is why people yo-yo on diets because they fundamentally don't change who they are. And that's what I wanna walk you through here. So there's no particular order in terms of how I'm sharing these. I'm just kind of like, I'm gonna stack them, but it doesn't mean that the one on the bottom is the most important or the least important. They're all very important. So the first thing we wanna talk about is skills. Skills. What are the skills your clients have to build in order to make change, not just uh, temporary, but long-term? The reality is that it's easy to work out once. It's very different to work out every single day. As Bruce Lee often says, I sure not the man who's done 10,000 kicks once, but the man who's done one kick 10,000 times. The power of consistency and repetition is so, so important. So what's the skill or skills that your clients have to develop? So I'll just give you some context. In the nature of our business, our clients have to develop and master three high-level skills, and underneath these are broken down into little ones, okay? We have productivity, which comes down to time maximization, like use your time instead of fucking around with it. Two is promotion, which is essentially marketing and sales, and that has a lot of different sub-skills. And then third is product. How do you build a solution that's so good it sells for you on your behalf? So these are like the major skills that we help our clients develop. And if we don't help them do those, then they're not gonna get the results. And and, you know, one of the biggest epiphanies that we had recently was on the productivity side. We actually don't historically haven't spent a lot of time with our clients around how to like make the most out of their time, how to actually work effectively. And so I thought to myself, what if we actually could teach our clients how to become more productive humans? Here's how to work. Here's how to chunk your time. Here's how to do deep work. Here's how to do like what you do first thing in the morning. Not a three hour morning routine, but actually like getting into deep work. How to set up your environment so you don't get distracted. Oh, is that, no, just kidding. It wasn't my phone, but as an example, right? How do we stay focused and do one thing and exclusively one thing? How do we single task instead of multitask? So we started to really build out, especially in this specific skill pillar, how we can help our clients be more productive. So in your case, with your clients, what might be something that is holding them back that couldn't seem so trivial to you? Like it honestly can be how they organize their kitchen, right? How accessible good food is compared to bad food. It might be a pantry reboot. So who's whatever it is, like skills and habits, okay? But if you wanna think of this, and I talked about this in one of the previous videos, is thinking of this as skill stacking or habit stacking. When you have a client come in, the last thing you wanna do is say, do all this stuff. Instead, break it down into bite-sized chunks. Okay, for the first week, all I'm gonna have you do is drink one liter of water every single day in addition to everything else you're doing. So don't change anything else, just drink one liter of water. Second week, all I want you to do is in addition to that one liter of water now is we're gonna walk for 30 minutes every single day. Don't change anything else. And so now what we're doing is we're starting to stack skills and over time they will replace other things that are not as supporting. So that's the first pillar. The second pillar are traits. So what are the character traits your clients need to adopt in order to become the version of themselves that achieves the goal that they want. See, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that they want the outcome, but they don't actually see themselves as having to be different to achieve the outcome. Here's the reality, is that if we want different outcomes, we have to be the person to achieve that outcome. Be, do, have. It's not just do and have, do and have. No, no, no. There's a massive component. This is what I'm talking about down here. If up here is have, do, Everything underneath the surface here is B. It's the beingness. And this is the most important piece in this whole equation. If there's nothing else you get from this video, understand that what you're having your clients do is less important than who you are helping them become. Because who you are helping them become is what's gonna create the DNA for the rest of their life. I've talked about this before. Think from your goals, not of your goals. When you think from your goals, you are already in the embodiment of the person who has that outcome. And then you work backwards to look at, okay, what are the traits? Let's look at a couple of traits as an example, just to solidify this. So a couple of traits, discipline. That might be a really good trait to develop. The discipline of what essentially discipline is, is doing what needs to get done, regardless of how you feel. I don't feel like working out today. I don't care. Discipline says, 
Here's the plan. You do it no matter what. It's cold outside. It doesn't matter. You do it. I don't want to get up early in the morning. It doesn't matter how you feel. You do it. And by building this discipline muscle, you fundamentally become a different person. When you can build the skill and the traits of discipline, you become a different person. And sometimes this is where you as the coach becomes so valuable because most people, as they are doing the being this work, this is where things fall off the rails. Skills go down, they walk for two days and then take a couple days off. No, 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 like this is where you as the coach really, really come in from an accountability perspective. Dude, you're paying me money. Just do what I'm telling you to do. And if you don't do it, I'm just gonna make sure you do it. And if you don't do it, well, that's on you, okay? So discipline, that might be an interesting trait to consider for your clients. Another one might be commitment. How do you develop this, the trait, sorry, of commitment? Commitment means you're in. Like you can kind of be committed. You can kind of be married. You're either married or you're not. You're either in the pool or you're, you're either swimming in the water or you're not. So commitment is very much the same. It's like you're in or you're out. It's black or white, there's no gray. And where a lot of people I think falter is they live in the gray zone, is they don't fully commit because commitment is scary. Because what if they fail? What if it doesn't work out? Or what if they do succeed and now all of a sudden their whole worldview changes? And by helping people build the traits of committing, deciding, which is to cut off all of their options, you help them fundamentally become a different person. And you think they might take that same trait in other aspects of their life. So commitment is an example of a trait that could be useful in some aspects in terms of helping people become better at terms of you know where they want to go. So think about what are some character traits that you can help or that you think are important for your clients to embody in order for them that if they embody those, they would move closer to the results that they want. Finally, is beliefs. So beliefs are really important because they shape a lot of our decision making. If you don't believe that there's any control you have over your future, why would you even take action toward that future? Like if you have a global belief that the world is a terrible place and everyone's out to get you and everything you do never works out, why would you consider doing anything? If you have a belief that all business coaches are scammers, you're never going to invest in a business coach as an example. So beliefs are very powerful because they really shape our destiny based on the decisions we make or not make. So let me give you an example. In our business, the three beliefs we want our clients to adopt Number one is success is hard. These might be useful for you as well. Doesn't matter if you're talking about business growth or health. Success is hard. You got to change the change. Anything worthwhile, and I've talked about this a million times, is going to be harder and longer than you want. Suck it up and deal with it. And this is why most people are sold these magic pills that are promising, you know, like utopian outcomes with little input. That's great. So like you want to have a compelling offer, sure. But you also have to bring it to reality. Like the reality is if you're 200, 250 pounds, you've never worked out before, this is gonna feel like shit. But you know what's worse? Is dying 20 years early, is waking up every single morning and being disgusted by what you see in the mirror, is not feeling confident in your body to even go to the pool with your kids. That's a fucking disaster. Do you wanna live that life or do you wanna get a little bit uncomfortable to do the work? This is the conversation you wanna have with clients even before you start working with them. You guys know me. I don't sugarcoat anything. I think you guys appreciate the fact that I'm a no BS straight shooter. I call it like it is. And I think if you bring this level of honesty to your marketing and sales process, you will attract better quality people who are like, yep, I get it. So one of the beliefs is success is hard. The other one is success is your responsibility. Your results are on you. What I'm sharing with you, like you can literally copy paste this and share this with your prospective clients. Think about it this way. It's almost physiologically and anatomically impossible for someone not to improve if they do what you have them do. If you do a push up every single day, you add one push up every day, do you think you'll do more push ups in 30 days? Yes. So the nice thing about working with people on the health side is that if they just do the work, it is impossible, like physically impossible for them not to see improvements, but they have to do the work. That's why I say success is your responsibility. It's your client's responsibility. And if you have that conversation with them, all the power to you. Third belief. And again, there's many, many beliefs. These beliefs may not resonate with you. That's fine. I'm just sharing my beliefs in terms of what I want to instill in our clients. Number three is boring leads to better. I don't do, I don't know if you see these videos on, on Instagram where, you know, you have these guys on like inclined treadmills with the barbell over their back and they're running. And the one guy like throws the barbell to his buddy behind who's doing chin ups with his legs swinging. It's like a fucking circus. It doesn't need to be exciting. Boring works. Squats, deadlifts, bench press, pull ups, the classic movements. You don't need to sexy it up. You just do the boring work. You do it over and over again and you will get stronger and your body will transform when it comes to business. Well, like if you know 
our business model, we teach our clients one thing and everything else is put the blinders on. Singular focus, 1% improvements every single day. That's how you build a stellar business. And I used to ask the question way back in the day, hey man, like what's new and exciting? It's a terrible question to ask. It should be like, what's the same old, same old? Well, wrote a couple more ads this week, helped a couple more people on our team, coached a couple clients. Like it's the same thing over and over and over again and you just get better at it. Because if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again, assuming it's working and you're seeing progress, it's impossible not to get better. So these are three beliefs that, at least for us, are important. What I would encourage you to think about as we wrap up this video are what are you know two to three skills you want your clients, even after they finish working with you, that for them to just live every single day? What are two or three character traits you want them to develop? And what are two or three beliefs that if they held these in their mind and really believe them to be true, would support them in their journey to improved health? As your clients become this type of person, the results take care of themselves because this type of person doesn't even think twice about working out. This type of person doesn't consider the chocolate fudge brownie because they're just, that's not even in their realm of possibility. They just see themselves differently. Not that there's anything wrong with the chocolate brownie. I mean, I, I enjoy the odd donut, but listen, I'm not here to, you know, preach my nutrition principles. But what I'm trying to get at is if you focus on beneath the surface stuff, the top of the surface stuff literally takes care of itself. But the problem is we're still dealing with so many issues because we're band-aiding solutions on people. We're not dealing with the core issues. And that's why I fundamentally love coaching, especially when you can get into not like necessarily therapy with people, but helping them move through their shit, move through their stories. And when you can help people become a better version of themselves, everything else in their lives improves, whether that's your health, your business, the relationships, how you do anything is how you do everything. Cool? So if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments what's resonating most with you. And if you want more awesome stuff, we've got another great video coming up right here. I have no clue what it is, but it's gonna be a good one too. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you over there next.